I'm currently working on a vehicle that's having issues with the turbos and boost and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to test these type of valves so if you have one of these in your vehicles you'll have a good idea after watching this exactly how to test these components <laughs> So the vehicle I'm working on in question is a BMW. It's got charge pressure related fall codes, drivetrain warning on under acceleration and down in power. So when you go on the low end accelerate, there is fall codes coming on related to charge pressure, which is related to the turbo. And any of these components here can cause that fault. Now, what are these named? Well, they can have many different names depending on what vehicle it is and what website you might look up. So vacuum solenoid valve, vacu vacuum actuator valve, diverter valve, pressure converter, turbo boost pressure control valve are some of the names associated with these components essentially testing methods are very similar from one to another the only difference is with these type of valves when we apply power to these they release the vacuum when we apply power to these they actually hold the vacuum in um, but we're going to need some components um, to test these first of all we're going to need a vacuum gauge which I have here because we need to apply a vacuum and see what it's capable of holding. You're going to need a voltage supply, so 12 volt battery. You can use the battery in the vehicle or um, some alternative that you have, maybe from a jump pack or something. Then we're also going to need some blankers to block off while we do the test. And you can do a multimeter test and check the ohms across them as well. This is the first valve I'm going to be testing. This is a BMW Genuine part. And if we look on this side, we can see VAC, which is for vacuum. So that's where we apply the vacuum in. This is the outlet, which will be blocking. And this is what goes to atmosphere. So that's where it will be bleeding off. And uh, we're also going to be apply power in there. You can use crocodile clips or you can use breakout leads or connectors like this which you can buy, which go in there. I actually have a connector off an old one, which I have cut, which will make this really easy for me to test. But as long as you can apply the 12 volts in there, it doesn't matter what you use. So I'm gonna be capping this off. So I've got my 12 volt power supply hooked up to a connector already, which I can just push in, makes it nice and easy. I'm gonna be applying vacuum here. I'll showcase on the gauge. And then I'm gonna tell you when I'm applying the power. So first of all, let's just get a look at the vacuum. So this is the initial test. You can see that it just bleeds off. I'm gonna apply the power. So power on. And now we can see it's capable of holding the vacuum in there when we have the electrical uh, voltage supply put on. I'm gonna release that now. I'm gonna turn off the power again. And you can see that it bleeds out to atmosphere afterwards. So that is the first test done. And that is a working valve on this one. I'll also just quickly show. So these are back probes. So again, you can go directly in on the connector. You don't have to have these type on it. I'm just making it easier for demonstration purposes. Ohm's test. Hopefully you can see that there, yeah. And we can check to see what resistance is in. And we can see here 14.1 is the resistance on the actual unit itself. And now that I've done all those tests, I have confirmed this is a fully functional working vacuum valve on this. I'm gonna test the other valve now to see what condition that's in. I'm only gently clamping it as well. There's absolutely no 
pressure on the housing because we certainly don't want to damage it. I have it reset up here. This is the second valve that I'm just about to test. I have the electrical connector already on, but the power isn't turned on just yet. I have the vacuum line left on this one from the vehicle on this side, and I just have it blanked at the back side of it. And we're going to apply vacuum in here now. So remember, no power applied. And just bleeding off, I'm going to turn on the power now. And again, it's not capable of holding. So we have a fault with this one. Do an ohms test on it. Check the resistance. Resistance is a bit higher on this one, 15, 15, but again, wouldn't be worried about that too much. This valve isn't capable of holding the pressure like the other one, and it's bleeding off extremely quickly. So we know we have a fault in that valve. I'm going to show you this style now and how you test these. I have the second type of valve set up now, again in the vise gently held. I have power and ground already supplied but it's not commanded on and my vacuum gauge is hooked up to this end. So vacuum in here. We're not going to be using a blanking cap on this one on this side. We're going to be checking what pressure it's capable of holding, if it's capable of holding. Then we're going to apply the power on and it should uh, bleed off instantly on these ones. So slightly different test process. Apply vacuum. And you can see that that one is dropping. So it is dropping slowly, but it's not holding completely. I'll apply power now. And then it completely releases. Go again. Pump it up to 0 0.5, which is about 15. And you can see it is bleeding off. I'll release the pressure now by applying voltage. Okay, so this one looks to have a fault because that should hold pressure. So I'll set up with this valve and I'll test it now. Okay, same test. Let's get a focus on the gauge. Get it up in pressure. And as you can see, that one is holding. That one is holding pressure. Not bleeding off at all. Then I'm gonna release it now. Perfect. Do it again. Pumped it up a bit higher that time. But again, it's not dropping off. That is holding steady and then release. Okay. And the last test you can do is just a simple resistance check to see. We have confirmed we have an issue though holding. Resistance on this one is 30.2. That's the faulty one. And that is 29.8. So very little difference in between. We wouldn't condemn that based on a resistance check. We condemn it based on the vacuum test that we've done. Not holding pressure, capable of releasing, but it is bleeding off where this one is not bleeding off at all. 
And that is it. That is how you successfully bench test these vacuum actuator solenoids. So if you have this type or this type, or even if you have something that's very similar, you now have a testing process for it. The Ohm's test is one option, but again, not very uh, accurate and you can certainly have failures while those pass. Applying voltage, listening for a click, it's very hard and faint to hear it on this type, but it's very easy to hear the click on this type and we were able to confirm that we have a loss of vacuum too quickly on uh, on one type and also a slow bleed off on the other type so this vehicle actually needs two replacement items before we put this all back together again i really hope you enjoyed this video hope you found it useful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching